Brainiacs, how long can you hold your breath? One minute, maybe two? Imagine having to hold your breath for 18 minutes and living to tell the tale. Or even spending almost three days in the deep sunken waters stranded in a capsized boat. Now while this may all seem like an anecdote from 1000 Leagues Under the Sea, guess again. In today's video we talk about some of the wildest underwater survival and escape stories including how one little trip to the bathroom saved a man's life. But before we dive in, don't forget to turn on the notification bell of this video to stay up to date on more unbelievable survival stories. While no one really wants to be submerged underwater longer than they have to, magician and escape artist David Blaine not only holds his breath for 17 minutes, but did it in front of a theater full of people. The average person in good health can hold their breath for about two minutes, but according to Blaine, practice can increase that time dramatically. He explains that because his body's first impulse is to breathe, the brain freaks out when it can can achieve its first and most basic instinct. A technique called glossopharyngeal insufflation, now that's a mouthful, is more commonly known as lung packing, maximizing the amount of air taken into the lungs. No surprise, this technique is used by professional deep sea divers just in case their tanks suddenly fail while on expedition. After years of rigorous and disciplined practice, the magician slash escaped artist not only demonstrated this to a live audience, but also walked them through the entire process. Good thing he didn't have stage fright. But the Guinness Book of World Records holder for the longest breath held underwater voluntarily was set in 2016 by a Spanish professional freediver at 24 minutes. But why is voluntarily such a key word in this scenario? Because not every person underwater looks to break that world record. In 2013, Harrison Okene was rescued off the Nigerian coast after surviving 60 hours underwater in a capsized boat. Without food, water, and sitting in complete darkness for a little under three days, Okene was slowly brought back to the surface with just a very few injuries. But how is that possible? No, the Nigerian man did not suddenly grow fins or learn a few pointers from mermaids. Scientists and physicists attribute his survival to nothing other than an air bubble. The physics of the air bubble that saved him, specifically its cup-shaped chamber, is similar to the technology used to help 19th century construction workers of the Brooklyn Bridge dive into the choppy east River. The media circus that followed O'Kenny's grandiose story baffled scientists particularly because of their calculations. After 56 hours in that air bubble, he would have suffered carbon dioxide toxicity. When someone is stranded in an enclosed space, exhaling CO2 with every breath steadily decreases the proportion of oxygen while increasing levels of carbon dioxide. This not-so-fun chemistry experiment is, in reality, what ultimately ends a person's life if they ever drown. But what's really unique about Okene's rescue is that his rescuers could not bring him up to the surface right away. Because he was 100 feet underwater, the pressure down there varies too much to that of the surface. To elude the threat of high air pressure, which could saturate his blood with nitrogen, Okene had to enter a diving bell or a transfer capsule to introduce him to the normal pressure levels above the water. But not everyone who's been trapped underwater is voluntarily or involuntarily trying to break the world record. In some cases, it's a deep sea rescue that can improve diplomatic relations. The AS-28 Russian submarine, for example, trapped seven sailors underwater for three days. Submerged roughly 70 kilometers deep on the Kamchatka Peninsula, Russian appealed to other countries for help. The UK's Royal Navy then responded and set a submersible robot to cut the fishnets that trapped the submarine propellers. So, Brainiacs, next time you find yourself complaining about having to make frequent trips to the bathroom in the middle of the night, it's a trip to the loo that saved O'Kenny's life. It might not exactly have the same effect for you, but it will put some things into perspective at least a drop more. 